I'm Martin Ball and I play Horace Hardwick. Horace is the English producer who has invited Jerry Travers uh, to Tom James's character to come over to England to star in, in, in his first English musical. And do you enjoy the role? You seem to enjoy it on stage. Yeah, terrific <laughs> fun. It's absolutely terrific fun. Horace is thrilled that Jerry's come over. It's a real, it's a real coup. But what's your favourite costume in, in the production? Well, all I get to, to wear really is my dinner jacket for most of the time, a little bit of a, a, a light suit in the uh, Piccolino on the Lido. Um, uh, but then I do have a rather fetching bathrobe in Act Two, which is very Noel Coward, and I, I'd, uh, I'd have to say that's my favourite. <laughs> Are we going to see that go missing? <laughs> I don't think I could really wear it around the home in Highbury, no. I'm not sure the cats would really, they would look at me very strangely. <laughs> my favourite number is Cheek to Cheek, for sure. Not only because it's the most beautifully written, beautifully crafted song, one of the most beautifully crafted songs I can think of anywhere, Irving Berlin or anyone else. But of course it looks fabulously elegant, all the costumes and the lighting are absolutely stunning. It's visually the most beautiful moment in the show probably, but also because it comes at an extraordinary moment in the show. It should be um, ostensibly a romantic number when we're dancing, I'm in heaven, when we're dancing cheek to cheek. But in fact, within the context of the piece, it's anything but. Jerry Travers is dancing with his girl, that's wonderful. But for poor Dale, she's actually not in heaven, but in hell. Because she's dancing with a man that she's fallen in love with, but it's, she believes to be her best, her best friend's husband. What does Top Hat mean to you? Like, what feelings does it evoke when you hear the music when you see it stage? A massive sense of nostalgia and of, of that wonderful era of the elegance of the 30s. If you weren't working as an actor, if the profession didn't exist, what do you think you'd be? Would you really like it? Oh, it's a, what a very good question. I've often asked myself, what the, what the hell would I do if I wasn't an actor, if the profession didn't exist? And I have no idea. When I was six years old, just before I was sent to boarding school, I was, sent to, I was taken to the school to you know, get to see what it looked like. And, and there was a production of HMS Pinafore, my parents took me to. I walked on stage at the end of the show absolutely enraptured by the thing and into the captain's cabin and was delighted beyond all belief to discover it was not a captain's cabin as I'd imagined with a parrot and a big brass wheel but just backstage flat stage weights and braces and lots of lists and props that delighted me beyond anything and I've never ever got over that extraordinary moment so when I was six I knew I wanted to be an actor so if you ask me now at 47 <laughs> what else I'd do I've known since I was six so I really have no idea. I, I would have loved to. I would love to be an airline pilot. I actually do have a, a private pilot's license, yeah. which is my, my, um, my guilty hobby. If I weren't doing this, what else might I like to do? I would love to play Scar in The Lion King. Um, that because that lovely number he has, "Be Prepared," sits very nicely in the five notes that I like to call my range. I'm not really a singer. Um, I'd love to do Higgins one day in My Fair Lady. That would be great fun. And I, before this I was doing Tenardier, which is just the greatest gift of a part for an actor. So I'm very lucky to have been able to do that. That was just wonderful. And so different, you know, nice middle class posh boys like me get, you know, only get to play, you know, we're more likely to play Higgins and, and Horace Hardwick. So to get a chance to do Tenardier was terrific. And the, the, the last question would be, can you describe a show in three words? Elegant, beautiful music.